this is totally not Danzig, and you're listening to the Shred Shack. <laughs> Greetings, folks. I'm Dan Mack. And this is Chris Mack. Welcoming you to episode 96 of the Shred Shack Podcast, your premier source of news and uninformed yet heavily biased opinions pertaining to all things heavy metal. Airing weekly or bi-weekly. It's bi-weekly now. Whatever. Bi-weekly on iTunes, Mixcloud, Google Play for now, uh, as well as on YouTube uh, at youtube.com slash the Shred Shack and youtube.com slash Adamant's Templum. Let's get started with some old business. Old business is old business, and new business is new business. Now, I took over writing the script for this week, um, and potentially for the future, so I did not write anything for old business. Um, I tend to forget what we talk about the previous week, so I forget what is old business. (laughs) So we may end up repeating a few things. Um, So let's just move right on. To new business. And this is new business, and we do not discuss new business until next quarter. I don't even listen to my own show, so. <laughs> no, we do not. No, we do. We once once the show's over, we're done. So if we made the same if we made the same joke like six thousand times, we're sorry. We're like those actors that never watch their own movies. Yeah. There, I, I remember the, there was an episode of The Critic where he makes the same Tom Cruise joke every single Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> And he doesn't realize that he's made the same joke over and over. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so unfortunately we start off uh, a little dark. So. Well, we're going to skip over new releases. Cause oh, yeah, new, new releases. releases. None of us have new releases. And I can guarantee that the answer to um, albums we we're listening to is iPod on Shuffle or something to that effect. Yeah, and I've been driving for Uber on the weekend, so it's been a lot of safer stuff. It, for lack of a better term, yeah. stuff that I, I know that I can get away with playing that I like that mm-hmm. other people might like, like Volbeat. And apparently the, the Night Flight Orchestra is a, is a very popular one now. Because oh, that, that's... <laughs> everyone's like, who is this? They sound like they're from the 70s. I'm like, well, that's the idea. Yeah, you know what you got to do is just like have like like burned copies of the albums in the I know, car. right? I just start, start passing shit out. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Just start, I'd like, be the best Uber driver ever. Start, start, start slinging that. Uh, they, actually, that they'd booty. probably look at me and be like, what's this? Slinging that booty sweat. <laughs> What's this? It's a yeah, CD. What's yeah, a CD? Yeah, I was gonna. Really? S- I was gonna say since cars now are not even doing CD CD uh, players anymore. Are you serious? Uh, from what I understand, newer models are only doing auxiliary ports. It's <sighs> all digital. No. Yeah, uh, my friend Michelle was telling me about that. She's like, I have books upon books of CDs. What am I gonna do now? I, was like, I, I just bought the new Behemoth record that's supposed to show up like uh, next week. Because it's not in stock at Amazon, which is weird. That's but, weird. you know, like, I just bought a CD. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, so let's start with our dark bit. Yes, dark bit. Okay, Marty Ballin, the legendary founder and lead vocalist of Jefferson Airplane and hit songwriter of Jefferson Starship, he passed away on September 27th. And when I was going through this article, um, they didn't list any uh, particular reasoning. Cause of death? Yeah, so it was probably natural causes. Yeah, I believe it was, like... He was 72 or so, mm-hmm. or something to that effect, but it was not of any particular reason beyond that, so at least that's a positive of that. So, let's move on to general news. Okay. On the weekend of September 9th and 10th, Five Finger Death Punch and Breaking Benjamin wrapped the summer portion of the North American Outdoor Amphitheater Tour. The co-headliners chose to donate a portion of their ticket sales this summer to two charity organizations close to their hearts. As a result, Five Finger Death Punch has donated $95,000 to COPS, which is an acronym for Concerns of Police Survivors, whose mission is rebuilding shattered lives of survivors and co-workers affected by line-of-duty deaths through partnerships with law enforcement and the community. And Breaking Benjamin has donated $95,000 to Prevent Child Abuse America, which counteracts the abuse and neglect of our nation's children by promising services that improve child well-being and developing programs that help to prevent all types of abuse and neglect. Always good to hear bands, you know, giving to charity, especially metal bands. Um, Even bands that nobody likes. Well, 
Uh, enough people like them, apparently, that so they get, made... They each raise $95,000. Yeah, yeah, so enough people like them. Like I, I can see Five Finger Death Punch. I didn't know Breaking Benjamin was still big enough of a deal. Or maybe that's the, the that's a collective amount that they had, and they split it and said, "Okay, okay, you do what you we do, mm-hmm. and then you do, I'll do what we do." Well, it's a, it was a co-headlining mm-hmm. tour, so so then yeah, yeah, that's, that sounds about right. All right. Next up, a new book titled "ACDC 1973 to 1980: The Bon Scott Years" will be published on November 14th by Jawbone Press. Packed full of rare photos and memorabilia, this large format full color book documents all the key events of this frenetic time, beginning with the band's very first shows in the blood houses of suburban Sydney, even before the name ACDC had been dreamed up by Margaret Young, Malcolm and Angus's big sister, and culminating with 1979's Highway to Hell, the album that paved the way for the mammoth, mammoth success of Back in Black. And all that was to follow, and the untimely death of Bon Scott, which prompted both an end and a new beginning for the band. I also want, I want to go on record and saying that I did copy and paste. I was going to say, dude, even I kind of edit little things out sometimes. Uh, I did, I did, <laughs> I did do a lot of editing later on, um, but I mean, man, but, man. I, but I wanted to include a lot about this one just because of the fact that I, I like the fact that the band does focus a lot on the Bon Scott era. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it was as pivotal as it was, I think Bon Scott was friggin' amazing. Um, I think years ago you you bought me the Plug Me In box set, which is a four DVD set, and I've watched part of it, and it's it's absolutely amazing how he was on stage. He was a he was a fucking force to be reckoned with. He was a you know he was a rowdy Freddie Mercury kind of. <laughs> that's that, that's the best way I can describe it. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, like if you just sat there, okay, the, the um, if you, you you put Freddie Mercury on, well, I can't say you put him on drugs because he was probably on drugs too. So, um, <laughs> next bit is very very long because it has a lot to do with um. Uh, monetary issues and oh, this would have been in the killing is my business area yeah. or the, the business side of things here. yeah definitely all right well here we go <clears throat> ex voivod bassist jean v Yves, let's just call him blackie has accused his former bandmates of fraud claiming that they have tried to cut him out of his rightful royalties for the albums that they wrote and recorded together According to Blackie, he was recently informed by the UK branch of BMG that a sum of Canadian dollars, 16000 will be paid out to him, representing the funds he is entitled to in connection with the re-release of some of the band's classic recordings. It will be paid out to him. Okay, it was okay. In a press release posted on his website, Blackie claims that Voivod drummer Michael Away Langvin and manager James McLean from Talks Cheap Talks Cheap Management received 7,000 British pounds, which is approximately 14,000 Canadian dollars, in 2007 in advance of the re-release of three Voivod albums that he had co-written, which is Roar, Killing Technology, and Dimensions, Hatros. Okay. However, when the band reformed a year later in 2008, Away and McLean kept, he's uh, quoted here, kept Blackie in ignorance of the fact the press releases states i think what they're okay. what, what he's he's getting at is that like they received the money and, and he, he should have too okay but he 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 did not receive the money and when they reformed in 2008 he was not informed that that money you know should have come to him okay or so he so someone claims his intuition that an advance might have been Paid by BMG to the band in order to prepare the re-release finally turned right. The bassist also claims that 50% of his copyright in Voivod's acclaimed 2013 album Target Earth has been fraudulently diverted away by fraudulently diverted by Away and McLean into a setup rights management company without any prior consent on his part, which he calls an act of misguidance, false representation, and fraud violating the Copyright Act. While he was still a member of Voivod, he was kept out of the decision-making process, he now claims. He goes on to blame important disagreements over management and lack of transparency for his decision to exit the group for the second and presumably final time in 2014. Blackie has vowed to get his hands on other royalties he is entitled to from all the record companies involved. These are my copyrights, he says. I will keep on battling until I get every penny they owe me. That's, that is a lot of... That is a lot going on right yeah, there. Yeah, really. Yeah. 
I mean, if he's if he's correct and this is all true, I'm I'm hoping he gets his due. Uh, considering that I I know that um, Voivod has been doing some re-releases lately, so mm -hmm. so he if 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 he's due, he's due. So. Yeah. That was a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, I think that was the, one of the, the longer ones, so don't worry. Well, we still have plenty to cover here, so let's keep yeah. on moving. Yeah. And A Life in Vision is a photographic journey of one of the most admired and respected vocalists of all time. Really, dude? You, you, skipped, just... you, you skipped ahead. Did I? Yeah, you skipped ahead. Oh, I did. Ahead. Yeah. All right, well, I'll come back. Anyway, but this is all about Ryan James Dio. But I, I just want to say a quick thing about how Blabbermouth writes their, their stuff. They really, they really lick the balls of some of these people. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. That's they, why I try to edit it down a yeah, lot. Yeah. And if, it, if like, the first paragraph doesn't tell the story, I skip the article. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, 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 started, doing, I started doing that about, you know, 60% through. Because the other way they do things is that they give you the news in the first article, then the rest of the article, like, three or four paragraphs is just backstory. Yeah, yeah. So like the the the, the mere, real meat of their article should happen in the first or second paragraph. If it doesn't, it's a waste. There's one that I'm going to mention later on um, that like was really shining the balls. Uh, like, the, there's also ones where they say their title of the thing is you know new new Slipknot album due when, and then it's like in a recent interview, they and then they go transcribe almost the entire interview to the point where like you don't want to read it. Yeah, you know, and it's yeah. like we get to the point where like where the headline is. I, I I got for, for for those for some of those I just got the basic information, but yeah, you know. that's what I try to I, I try to get the basic information because I just don't want to like reread an article. Yeah, most times, but uh, and then we can do our reactions to it. But then like other times, it's like man, there's just too much here for me to 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 cut and paste. Yeah, or for me to cut without getting to the per important information, so I just cut it out. And and it's funny because like like the headlines will will basically be a summation of what's being said in in the uh, in the interview. So it's like, why don't you just get to that right away? Right. All right. Anyway, so we're talking about Ryan James Dio, and uh, the book is called A Life in Vision. It's a photographic journey. And it's due on September, uh, December 7th. This beautiful collection of photos was taken by New Jersey photographer Frank White to capture Dio from his first ever U.S. show with Rainbow in 1975 through 2009, just a few months before he lost his fight with cancer in May of 2010. This collection covers Dio's career with Black Sabbath, his own band Dio, and Heaven and Hell. This unique item is limited to 500 copies worldwide. You can order by, if you order by October 30th and have your name pre Printed in the oh okay. If you order by November, October thirtieth, you can have your name printed in the book and a dedication page. Oh, on a dedicated page. Okay, I see how it works. I would totally do that. All right. The book notes are it's one hundred forty-four pages, A four hardback, printed on one hundred and seventy GSM silk paper. That's that sounds like some pretty sweet shit. Okay. Photos digitally restored and clean, custom-made black foiled buck ram presentation box. Set of four prints on four hundred. Uh, this is just ridiculous. I don't even know yeah. what the hell they're talking about here. Yeah. All right. Anyway, it, it just sounds like a very, very intensive book. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and a lot of a lot of the old photos from the days of of Dio and 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 Black Sabbath. I feel like they they don't get like I have a Black Sabbath poster of with Dio fronting the band, and a lot of that shit is is very cool to see. Uh huh. Yeah, it's definitely very like very cool sh cool shots. Um, I don't know how much this thing is. I never got a price out of it. No. But, but I mean, it's well. While we're on the subject of books here, mm. Epica recently announced that they are working on their first ever book, The Essence of Epica. This unique book will tell the story of the remarkable musical journey of Epica in the band members' own words, and is illustrated throughout with rare, candid, and classic photographs. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm kind of surprised that a band as I want to say as as young as they are, because they have been around for a long time, twenty years now. But but you know, there have been some artists who have been around for much longer who don't have books yet. Um, one of the articles I was I was I had passed over was saying that um, Hal, uh, Halford's ready to write his autobiography. He doesn't have one. No. Even the even the singer before Halford has his autobiography. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, what that's, the what, hell? that's what I'm saying. Like you, you like you're 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 ready for this kind of stuff. Like it, it's just it's just um, 
It's just surprising that it's coming from a, a younger band. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Canadian thrash metal pioneers. This is the kind of stuff I, I, I copy, I, I delete. Um, well. Exciter have once again parted ways with guitarist John Ritchie. The news of Ritchie's exit was broken by bassist Alan Johnson, who wrote on his Facebook page, some rather heavy news in the Exciter camp. Due to certain professional and personal differences, John Ritchie has decided to leave the band. I wish to inform the fans worldwide that Dan Beller... I think it's Beeler. Beeler, Beeler, drums and vocals, and I are going to forge on with our songwriting and recording. However, live shows will be postponed until such a time that we can find a suitable guitarist. Well, here's hoping they do that soon. All right. Bassist Fiddy Weinhold has announced his departure from Udo, which is the band fronted by Udo. Dirk Schneider, that guy. His final performance with Udo will take place next month in Palma de Mallorca, Spain. Part of the reason I wanted you to keep reading these is because of the fact that... Yeah, because I can't like... pronounce shite. <laughs> yeah, it gets better. It gets better every day, every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you douche. <laughs> no, I mean, in, in the in the script, it gets better. Dirk Schneider, I can say that. <laughs> yeah, you can say Dirk Schneider. There's a lot of letters in that one. <laughs> I just pronounce things phonetically. It's not exactly right. All right, here we go. This one would have been like the, in the uh, the charts area. Mm. It has notable points. I, yeah, I didn't think of that, um, but there's a lot of information in there in general, yeah. and I found it all to be very very interesting. Yeah. It just, gen just generally interesting. Yeah. So, Well, according to Billboard, Metallica's self-titled 1991 album, often referred to as The Black Album, has scored its 500th non-consecutive week on the Billboard Top 200 chart. It is now one of only four albums with 500 weeks or more on the tally. Now, this is non-consecutive as in non it's, fallen, it's fallen off the 200 before, but yeah. come back. Yeah. Only three other albums have spent more time on the Billboard Top 200 chart since it began publishing on a regular weekly basis in 1956. Pink Floyd's The Dark Side of the Moon. 937 weeks. God damn. Which means nobody's touching it because that's number one. Because yeah, the cause... guy behind him, Bob Marley and the Whalers, Legends, the best of Bob Marley and the Whalers, which I actually own too, that's only at 539 weeks. Mm -hmm. So you can only imagine that nothing will ever touch the dark side of the moon. Yeah. And Journey's Greatest Hits, 539. I mean... We're talking like Cal Ripken numbers here. Yeah, like, that, that, like, that means wow. <laughs> that means that Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon is it, is if it's is it, is it on the top two no, hundred? No. no, I don't okay, think so, it has been for a while. Okay, so if it's not on right now, that if it stays that way, that means that Metallica has to stay on the charts for the next eight years at least. At minimum, at uh, minimum. Yeah, like the, what's what's the four hundred thirty-seven? So that is nine hundred thirty-seven. I'm, no, I'm saying like the the difference. Oh, oh, oh the, yeah. The difference is 437. Yeah. So they have to say for eight plus years, and like that's I don't see that happening. I'm I'm sorry. As as much as I enjoy Metallica and the Black Album, no. Yeah. You know, but Pink Floyd got to beat yo. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, Journey's Grace is always on there now. The thing is, I think the the, the unfair thing here is that now that they count the streaming thing, that mm -hmm. we've had this conversation before. That certain albums get numbers bumped because of that. Yeah, like it's not like people are going out and buying these records. That people who are listening on like Spotify or Pandora or anything that ticks these yeah. albums up because of plays. But it's still a matter of weeks. Yeah, you know, and that's still a matter of a matter of long time. All right. Well, here we go. We still got some more information in here. Mm -hmm. All right. In 2014, Metallica became uh, the first album to sell 16 million copies since Nielsen SoundScan started tracking sales in 1991. To date, it has shifted 16.83 million units in the United States Damn. alone. It was certified 16 times platinum on December 13th, 2012, by the RIAA, which of course is the Recording Industry Association of America, for shipments in excess of 16 million copies I'm in the U.S. I'm wondering how long it went. It took them to go from from 15 to 16, and because like 
six years seems like a good long time. We might be hitting the point where they hit 17. Yeah. Well, we're, we're seeing that at 16.83 million units now. Yeah, I'd say in the next two years. And anytime, like I said, th- now that they're counting streams and stuff like that, anytime you put on heavy metal radio, hard mm-hmm. rock radio, you're going to hear a Metallica song. Yeah, def- definitely. Minimum in the, once. Definitely in the next two years, that's going 17 yeah. times flat. The album in 2009 surpassed Shania Twain's 1997 record Come On Over as the best-selling CD of the sound scan era. Take that, Shania Twain. There you go. All right. Next up, The Devil Wears Prada has signed a deal with Solid State Records for its next album. Details about the band's label debut will be announced soon. Cool. San Francisco Bay Area Metal Titans. Really? Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I left that one in. Machine Head. I was doing a lot of copy and paste. Have announced that their upcoming U.S. tour will be the last one to feature the band's current lineup of Rob Flynn, Phil Demmel, Dave McLean, and Jared McIrson? McIrkin. I can't, I'm, not McCracken. Even, I'm not trying that one. All right. Flynn broke the news of Machine Head's plans in a 10-minute Facebook Live video in which he revealed that Demo left the band on Wednesday, September 26th, followed by McLean's exit a day later. Jared kind of quit, but didn't know if he was quitting for sure, Rob added. See, I think... Um, see, th- th- that article did not mention the whole Machine Head's going to break up thing. As far as well, I can tell, but the article that we posted um, on our our page said that they were done after this tour. Well, the thing is, that's what the that's what the conclusion was. The thing is, a few days later, I saw that you know Rob Flynn got back on Facebook Live, which he really needs to kind of just chill on, yeah. and says that no, the band's not breaking up. The band will continue. That this lineup uh-huh. is no more. Okay, remember this. Machine Head is Rob Flynn's baby. Yeah. So as long as Rob Flynn wants to do it, Machine Head will exist. The same thing with Megadeth. The same thing with Ice Earth. It doesn't matter who's playing with them. Mm-hmm. The band still exists. Yeah. I, I just I, I got I got the vibe of like he he just like ah fuck it everyone's leaving. No, I, I mean he's no as he's he's the mastermind of it. As long as he is playing, Motorhead M- Machine Head is a thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, like I said, just like Megadeth can't replace Dave Mustaine. If Mustaine is in the band, Megadeth exists. Same thing with Ice Earth. If John Shaper is running the show, Ice Earth exists. Ministry, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Corn has launched its new coffee brand, Corn Coffee. How? <sighs> that's that's kind of unoriginal. original I name. just really want them to make tortillas. Corn tortillas. <laughs> no no <laughs> cream corn why coffee Legit- why ruin coffee uh, well, everyone does everyone does coffee everyone everyone picks coffee hot sauce and alcohol damn it that's like lifeblood <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I live on all of those yeah. except for alcohol damn it that's what upset me about quitting drinking is that after I quit drinking like every band released something yeah. It's like, fuckers. Man, I just want to try it. Like, at least I tried the Trooper beer before I quit. Anyway. Um, uh, made entirely with certified fair trade whole beans. You don't have to read all this, the extra bullshit. Okay, that. I was going to say, this is ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, it's just basically saying that, that this was, you know, the band had a lot of involvement in the... In the... Yeah, Corn Percy curated the creation of Corn Coffee, a process mm-hmm. that saw the band members tasting multiple variations before ultimately just selecting the perfect roast and blend. So I can just imagine a lot of tweaked out caffeine freaks like, oh my god. Yeah. Even like David, uh, Dave Ellison has his own coffee. Yeah, he does. Yeah, which I have to try one. Uh, well, we just time. tried Death Wish coffee at home, <laughs> which is, I think, the same... Uh, it's in the same line as Valhalla Coffee, which is the the Zach Wilde brand. Okay. And it's really good. Oh, that's good. You know, it's probably super expensive, but it was we got it. There was a, a special on Amazon. We got a pound. Oh, that's good. We got a pound of it for like half price. Oh, that's good. It's usually like twenty pound, uh, twenty bucks a pound or something like that. Gotcha. So. Okay. All right. Pearl Jam have announced its home shows initiative raised ten point eight million dollars to be distributed to nearly 100 organizations working to fight homelessness in Seattle and King County. The money was raised with the help of more than 170 partners, corporations, philanthropists, restaurants, and small business businesses, along with thousands of individuals inspired by Pearl Jam's home shows concerts August 8th and 10th. 
Most home shows partners have designated the organizations that will receive their financial con uh, commitments, which total nearly $7.8 million. More than $1.3 million is being distributed by home shows to nonprofits selected by Pearl Jam with guidance from a 19-member advisory group of service providers, issue ex experts, and funders. Those funds will be targeted to two areas. Uh, diversion, a strategy to reduce the length of time families and individuals experience homelessness and youth homelessness. In addition, $1.7 million remains to be granted by partners, the band, and advisory group based on future needs assessment. Again, always good when bands are charitable, and Pearl Jam is, is definitely among those that – they do that a lot, I feel. Well, the thing is they, they, they know the power of their draw, too. Yes, absolutely. You know, and they, then those are the one of the bands that we've talked about in the past where you don't hear much about them in the, in the mainstream, but they have this rabid – following they do like and their shows are humongous not just like concerts but events yeah you know we could say the same thing about bands like dave matthews and like guys who fly under the radar but are just massively popular yeah all right on sunday october 7th vicky cornell in the museum of pop culture celebrated seattle's son music icon and late grammy award-winning singer-songwriter chris cornell with the public unveiling of a commemorative statue. The life-size statue commissioned and donated to the museum by Vicki Cornell will stand outside the museum's south entrance facing 5th Avenue North. The, sculpt the statue sculpted by artist Nick Maraz uh, showcases the rock legend in one of his iconic poses with his signature boots, dog tag, layers, and long locks. So an old school yeah. kind of visage of him. Yeah. So... Life size. The dude was like six five, so I think it's huge. Yeah, um, I'm gonna shorthand the next one. Um, oh, you're gonna you're gonna do this one? Gonna... Yeah, because it's a big one. Um, so it looks like, from what I was reading from the article, uh, Believe Digital has acquired a majority stake in Nuclear Blast. I I was seeing something about this. Yes. Now we've talked about Nuclear Blast being the biggest. Indie label, indie label, or or, or the big as, as far as metal goes, they are top tier in in my eyes. Mm -hmm. As far as like, if you're on Nuclear Blast, you're, you know, you're elite. You know, would that be true? I don't know, uh, but what it seems like is that it's supposed to be a business venture, but otherwise business as usual where the CEOs that were there and the people that were there running certain areas, including Nuclear Blast UK, are still running the show in that regard. It's just uh, supposed to, um, you know, embrace the fact that the times they are are changing mm -hmm. and and get more into the, the digital uh, aspects of things. Um, so it was, a lot, it was a lot to say in there, but I didn't want to have you read it all because it is a lot. So yeah, it'll probably just be very confusing. Yeah. At the at the you know, yeah, yeah. And I'll even sum up the next one too. The next the next one is basically just saying that uh, Cor uh, Corey Taylor uh, from Slipknot has announced that the band is going to be working on their follow up to uh, Point Five, the Great Chapter. Hopefully. They said hopefully in 2015. And the reason they put it in all the extra was because he... Buddy, 2015? Uh, 2000, 2019, okay. sorry. <laughs> 2019. Um, the reason that I put all the extra stuff in there was because even he was a little skeptical about it because it's a matter of timing for yeah. all of them. It's like yeah, it says it depends on when we get in the studio, and the, right now the plan is for the studio early next year. <laughs> Like, first couple of months, mm -hmm. and then a couple of months to get that going, a couple of months to get production, new masks, new outfits, and new everything. And hopefully be able to come out and start touring in the summer when the album comes out. And that is the summer of 2019, yeah. so they, they You are... know what's funny is that I copy and paste the same exact thing I put it in recording news. It's like the, my one contribution for the day. All right, well, well, we already... I'll try to skip that now. Yeah, well, you can, you, you, can, you can skip that. All right, are we ready? Yeah. All right, we're going into recording news for real now. Yeah, rec this recording news and recording news was extensive as fuck. Um, that's where a bulk of our podcast is actually going to come from. We are not doing a discussion today because of the fact that I felt that we had so much recording news. All right, here we go. Sammy Hagar, 
is currently working on the upcoming first album of all original material from The Circle. His critically acclaimed supergroup also featuring Michael Anthony, Jason Bonham, and Vic Johnson. That's cool because I love Sammy Hagar, and I believe he just turned 71. I was going to say, anything he does with Michael Anthony tends to be good. Yeah, but like, he, he doesn't age. No, he's looked exactly the same. Yeah, he, he's... He doesn't he, just can't drive 55 he can't age past 55 yeah seriously like, <laughs> he has looked he has looked very much the same for a long time and he still sounds good so. yeah the same could be said for like alice cooper and stuff too so uh, psh, nice. yeah alice cooper will go until he dies on stage all right german thrash veterans sodom will release a new ep partisan on november 23rd via spv steam hammer the effort will be made available as a cd digipack 10 inch clear vinyl download and stream i actually saw the track list for this um i was a little disappointed because it's literally two songs and a live song oh that's a bummer yeah so that's um, like a single not an ep yeah it's more of a single that sucks <laughs> yeah so well, not yeah it's disappointing yeah that's disappointing all right flat earth which is the new band featuring former hymn members miko lind lindstrom on guitar and mika gaslips Car- carpinen carpinen uh on drums alongside ex amorphous bassist nicholas no. <laughs> this is the part where I was like, yes. And Polanski singer Antony Anthony. Uh, Pickerinian. Pickerinian? All right. Okay. Pickerinian. Has inked a deal with Drakkar Entertainment for Europe, excluding Finland. Aren't all these guys from Finland? Yeah. <laughs> the band's debut album, None for One, is due in November. They probably have something special for, for Finland. <laughs> um, but it's kind of interesting because... Um, Gas Lipstick, the, the drummer, is a busy man. He just... I was going to say, he, he was in another band that we he, talked about. Yeah, recently, right? uh, We Sell the Dead, which was my number one for last month. Oh, shit. I believe... No, it was my, not, last, not last month. Um, March. Uh, it was my number one. Uh, because it's really fucking good. <laughs> like, wow. Like, okay. Like, very, very groove-heavy, like, Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was, okay. it was, it was, it was good. Okay. It was good. So... All right, Stone Sour drummer Roy Mayorga has confirmed to the Talking Metal podcast that he is planning to record a solo album once the band goes on on hiatus in 2019. Which we just mentioned is all all because of the Slipknot stuff that should be happening at that time. Yeah. (laughs) What? I'm thinking of Slipknot albums like come around like the Olympics, like every four or five years. Actually, there's there's a thing. Well, well, I'll mention that. I'll mention it later when we get to the band that something specific about. Them. All right, Avenged Sevenfold will release a new EP containing all four songs the band has written and recorded for the Call of Duty Black Ops franchise. No release date given as of yet. Uh, it may have been given. I I, I didn't look at the. Um, there was a follow up article because apparently um, they released one of the songs. Oh yes, yes, and, yes. And apparently the mix was atrocious. Yeah, the and mix fans was compl- really bad, and the fans complained. And they, they remixed it. Yeah, and they set it back out again. And so in that in that article about them resending it, they may have done a release date. I did not look further into it, but I just found that very funny. So it's it's kind of like that time that Nevermore re- re- made an album, and people hated the mix so much that they re-recorded it and re-released it. That's funny. And Metallica's in there like, man, we should probably do the same thing with Satan. Say- no, let's not bother. <laughs> let's uh, not go there. <laughs> I was like, no, no, they, they did that just fine with the DVD that came along with it. Which was, was so much better than the actual fucking album. Yeah. Oh, that pissed me off so much. Yeah. So. Oh, my God. Anyway, Motley Crue Fat Man, I mean, singer. Dude, there was a picture of him recently, dude. With Sammy Hagar? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's he's not pretty. He, he's a, it's he's not a, pretty. He's a fat motherfucker now. Oh, man. And the thing is, like, it's not like, like there's like fat, but this like he looks pregnant. Like, he's yes. about to have, yeah. he's about to birth twins. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, it's, he's, wow. He's, he's, he's beer belly hardcore. Oh, so. man. Which, which I'll get, I'll, I'll say something funny afterwards. Okay, anyway, but he says, between sips of whatever, says that the band is returning to the studio to record four new songs. Motley Crue will never die. Yeah. Nikki Six has confirmed that this new music is intended for the film adaptation of the group's biography, The Dirt, Confessions of the World's Most Notorious Rock Band. Now, I'm not making... I don't, I don't want to sit here and make fun of them for, for 
having made weight and everything like that. But I will say that in the pictures that they show of the band, he's always pictured in the back. He's pictured behind Mick Mars and Nikki Six. Huh. Never saw, never. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like filming um, Marlon Brando in the shadows. Oh, like that's what oh. I'm that's what I'm getting at. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm getting at. Like I don't know when the photo was taken, but if it was taken more recently, then it was definitely a matter of that. We are going apocalypse that. now. On I'm you. going apocalypse now. Redux. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right, here we go. This is another long one here. In celebration of the 50th anniversary of the release of the Jimi Hendrix Experience masterpiece Electric Ladyland, Experience Hendrix LL, Experience yeah. Experience Hendrix LLC and Legacy Recordings, the catalog division of Sony Music Entertainment, are releasing the deluxe edition box set on November 9th. Available as either a three CD one Blu-ray set or a 6LP one Blu-ray set. Both packages include the original double album, now newly remastered by Bernie Grundman from the original analog tapes. For the LP set, Grundman prepared an all-analog direct-to-disc vinyl transfer of the album, preserving the authenticity. Also included is Electric Ladyland, The Early Takes, which represents uh, which presents demos and studio outtakes from this period of Hendrix's career, plus a new 5.1 surround sound mix of the entire original album by Hendrix's original engineer, Eddie Kramer. This marks the first and only time this has been done with a Hendrix studio album and gives listeners the original stereo mixes in uncompromised 24-bit 96KZ high-resolution audio. Jimi Hendrix Experience, live at the Hollywood Bowl on September 14, 68, part of Experience Hendrix's Dagger Records official bootleg series, is another exclusive component. The never-before-released recording captures the band and the mounting excitement that took place just weeks before the release of Electric Ladyland. The Blu-ray also includes the acclaimed feature-length documentary, At Last, The Beginning, The Making of Electric Ladyland. And lastly, before I run out of breath, Electric Ladyland Deluxe Edition includes a, a full-color 48-page book containing Jimmy's handwritten lyrics, poem, and instructions to his record label, as well as never-before-published photos from the recording sessions that were shot by Eddie Kramer himself. That is a <sighs> intense package. Yeah. Damn. Which is what she said. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, Why do you have to ruin things? Oh, man. Um, well, um, apparently that's also, a cup of tea. That, that's also what the plaster caster said about him as well. Oh. So. <laughs> so damn. <laughs> I am, I am quick fire. Now today. I'm getting... Kiss that song, Plaster Caster. The unplugged version of it is really good. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a good song. <sighs> <sighs> Fucking hate you. <laughs> just, just carry on. Rex Brown is working on material for his second solo album. The former Pantera and Down Bassist wrote on Instagram, slugging it out in the studio, writing and recording solo record number two. Stay tuned, folks. This is getting good. Rex, uh, Rex's debut solo disc, Smoke on This, was released in 2017 in July via Entertainment One Records. The effort marked the first time in Brown's career where he served as both lead vocalist and guitarist in a band. Did you hear any of his No, stuff? I did not. It's actually pretty good. Is it really? Yeah, it's pretty good. I always saw him more of like a... A down bluesy country guy, and he was. And that's that's kind of what it is. Yeah, it's it's definitely in that same vein, and it's pretty good. So, did you ever listen to the Rebel Meets Rebel record? The I have that, it. I have not but I the one that to like it. that the pretty much Parentera did with uh, David Allen Co. Yeah, I have it, but I haven't listened to oh, it. Some grimy shit on that. It's real good. <laughs> it's real fucking good. It's like heavy metal country. It's fucking great. <laughs> Okay, anyway, Epica's unique collaboration with the Metropole Orchest, a world-renowned Dutch orchestra which has performed and or recorded with the world's biggest superstars such as Sting, Bono, and Brian Eno, will be released as a limited edition vinyl and digital download on October 26th through Nuclear Blast. 
The band will also be entering the studio at the end of 2019 for the follow-up to their latest album, The Quantum Enigma. So they got a lot of stuff going on. I was going to say, on. they have a lot of stuff going they got, on. They got the book. They got this this special... Recording. Yeah, and they recording. got a new album. No. Recording. Wow. No no downtime for them, so... Staying busy. All right. Amon Marth will release a new DVD and Blu-ray, The Pursuit of Vikings, 25 Years in the Eye of the Storm in November. The set will include a documentary as well as footage of the band's 2017 performance at the Summer Breeze Festival in Dinkelsboro, Germany. I want to stick with that one. That was pretty good. Uh, Amon Marth is also working on material for its next album, tentatively due in early. Dude, 2019 is gonna rock. I know, right? Rock. It's it's either November or 2019. Like the, the I'm I'm serious. Like like the recording news was was so stacked, and I was just like, man, this is the gonna be the best year ever. Oh well, dude, dude. Ramstein is putting the finishing touches on the orchestra and choir recordings for his upcoming album, the follow-up to 2009's album. Liebe is for Alida. All right, Mr. Take German for a couple of years. I, I took German for a couple of years. I, I completely arsed over the pronunciation. But, <laughs> but um, that one I'm really excited for just because that last album actually was really good. Um, and this is the band that I was saying before um, releases albums very, very, you know, they they yeah, they, they span slow. a couple of years, and you know, this one is is ten now, years in the making. Yeah, it's gonna be ten years in the making. Um, they've they've played shows and whatnot. Um, they've all done. I think they all done projects. Definitely, till yeah, uh, till he, Lindman, uh, singer, has definitely done a he's done a solo album, and he's a, appeared here and there. So they're all keeping generally busy, but uh, a new Ramstein album is always appreciated. And anything that involves orchestra and a choir in that kind of band is going to be epic yeah absolutely. it's going to be huge absolutely so so that's going to be that's going to be well worth a listen yeah all right u.s metal veterans virgin steel will release seven devils moonshine a special five cd box set for their 30th anniversary 35th anniversary spp steenheimer will release seven devils moonshine on november 23rd including five discs a total of 88 songs where three CDs contain totally new songs and new versions. Wow. The package will also include a sticker, a 24-page booklet with new lyrics and photos by David DeFees. I, I think that the last Virgin Steel uh, actual album came out a long time ago, so having having an, a thing of just three albums, like, here you go, bam, that's not too much of a surprise. Yeah. So... Um, but I love Virgin Steel, so that's that's exciting for me. So, well, here's one for another chalk it up to 2019 for this guy. Jesse Leach has revealed that he is uh, about halfway through laying down vocals on 21 new Killswitch Engage songs. The band will then figure out which tracks to include on its upcoming album, which is expected to arrive in early 2019. <laughs> Killswitch Engage's new disc will feature a guest appearance on this on one song by the band's former lead singer Howard Jones, which is just f- fantastic. What what I find very funny is that like he's he's recording the vocals for all the songs and then they're going ah we're throwing out that one and that one. You know what happens one, when they do that? One. They release the special edition, which turns into like a double album. It's like why not just do. A what? double album. Why don't you just do a double album? Like, because, because double albums don't sell, apparently. And plus, it, it was such a trend, like, in 2000 and, like, what was it? 2016, it was a pretty big trend for double albums. Metallica did one. Mm-hmm. I mean, Iron Man did one the year before. Yeah. Uh, Soilwork did one, like, in 2014. Like, there was just... Bands who never had done a double album released double albums. And the reasoning behind it was, like, why? What, what, well, at least I, I, I think the thing that pissed me off the most is that Metallica released a double album, mm-hmm. a triple album if you include the bonus disc with the live stuff. Yeah. But if you combine the two actual parts of the album, it, actually, it was still shorter than the third fucking disc. Why was it a double album? <laughs> at least though, they kept the price of it low because uh. I bought it. I bought the three disc version for like ten bucks. Yeah, you know. Um, I think the th- I think that would bo- what would bother me more uh, would be probably like well let's let's do like a, a load reload a mesmerize hypnotize thing like let's release this and then six months later let's release a 
like the rest. Like that would piss me off more. I yeah. Think. Um. So, I have a feeling they're gonna do what you what you said, and they're gonna release the album, and then six months later they're gonna do a deluxe edition that has all the extra shit. The thing that bothers me sometimes about that is when they do that and they tack on the extra tracks at the end of the album is like I just want to listen to what the album was meant to be mm-hmm. without the bonus stuff. Yeah. You know, if you want to do the bonus stuff EP later, you know. Stuff like that, that's cool, but yeah. don't tack it on to the end of what the album was supposed to be. I mean, it, or they may just save it for the next album. Who knows? But Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh. Ginger vocalist Tatiana... Sh- don't even try it. Yeah. Has confirmed to the Impact Metal Channel that the band is working on music for the follow-up to 2016's King of Everything album. Right now, we're in the process of writing, of composing new material, she said, in the video below. I, I, forgot to, I forgot to take that part out. <laughs> and I must say a few, I think three or four songs are already done musically. So this is my turn to write lyrics right now, but I haven't yet heard those songs. I have a lot of time to just, uh, dedicate to listening to new material right now, so I think this autumn people are going to hear something new from us, definitely. So, fall. Yeah, well, we're uh, in the we're already in deep fall. in that right now. Yeah, we're already in fall. All right, next up here. 40 years ago, whatever day this article was written, the four founding members of KISS, Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Ace Frehley, and Peter Chris, released their respective solo albums all on the same day to much fanfare, chart success, and platinum sales. And now, four decades later, all four of these pioneering albums are celebrated Man. in the solo albums, 40th anniversary collection. A limited edition, 180-gram, 4-LP box set by Casablanca, You, Me. That's in earmarked for release on October 19th. That's next week. Yep. Each heavyweight 180-gram LP features a unique color to match its associated cover art. Gene Simmons appears in red vinyl. Paul Stanley uh, sports purple vinyl. Ace Frehley contains blue vinyl. And Peter Chris is in green vinyl. All four albums are housed together in a deluxe black matte slipcase that features glossy black images of the four artists' faces surrounding a silver foil print of the infamous KISS logo. Also included in this set are four 12 by 12 inch posters of each album cover, plus an exclusive turntable slip mat that shows all four of artists, um, Araldo, whatever, iconic painted album cover face images all connected together. This sounds like fun. Um, I just, I just find it kind of funny that they have to sit there and mention like yeah they all went platinum and it's like they don't want to mention that Peter Chris sold the weakest <laughs> uh, I just I'm just interested is like what what kind of cut does Peter Chris and Ace Fraley see of this sort of thing I don't know, you know I, I would I would well it, considering the fact that it's it's technically their solo albums like it's under the Nick Kiss name but they are their solo albums they are sole writers for these things they should yeah but that doesn't mean the thing is that doesn't mean they own the rights to these songs. Mm. I mean, we've we've had we've we've seen this in the past where people sell the rights to their songs to other people, and they have no power over it whatsoever. Which is what a big fight between Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney was, because Michael Jackson bought a majority of the Beatles the rights. Beatles records. Yeah, he had the rights to the Beatles music. He could do whatever he wanted with it. Yeah, and Paul McCartney, the writer of these songs, had nothing. Dick in hand. <laughs> so, all right. So th- this is where I put in my my bit about Corey Taylor, and we were talking about that. Yep. Next up, Icarus Witch will release "Goodbye Cruel World" on October twenty sixth via Cleopatra Records. That's cool. The Offspring have resumed work on their tenth studio album. No release date has been planned as of yet. I'm excited for that. Um, I didn't hear their last album, but the one before that was fucking fantastic. I love the, the fact that they're still going is fantastic. Yeah, I, I love I, I love the band. You know what's really funny is like one of the things I I do I work at I do part time work during the day at uh, a pie shop, and in the back I just fold boxes pretty much. I yeah. make boxes. We make three hundred pies or six hundred pies a day, and I fold boxes to put these things in. So I put my Pandora on, and the other day I decided I wanted to go do nostalgia. Mm-hmm. And I put in Nirvana Radio. And if you know anything about Pandora, the way it works, so you put in a band name, and they play music around that band, similar artists or like similar sounding music, whatever. Yeah. So and it's like listening to that playlist is like listening to the CD collection I had in 1996, and it's fantastic, <laughs> <laughs> including it's... like 
whenever Offspring comes on, I was like, oh my god, this is so great. <laughs> I, when um, when we had parties recently, we we have um, I believe we have Amazon Music on our on our TV. Um, we played. You know, you you go to the music thing. You say, I want to listen to this kind, or like you know, it was we were looking for like '90s crap or something like that. And like all the channels, like showed like little previews of what's gonna be played, and they were all the same. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't matter what I picked, but like when I picked it, like I'm sitting there listening to it, and I was like, okay, Weezer, I have that album. Everything, and the Deftones, I could do without, you know. And they play Shove It, and then just going through it, I was like, I have all these. Why don't I just bring out my iPod? <laughs> Right. I was like, oh wait, I have some embarrassing things on there. We don't want to listen to Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> and then it comes on anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately followed by play that funky music <laughs> by Vanilla Ice. <laughs> I was like, damn it, dude. Really? I have thirty five thousand songs on here and you picked two on the same album. I hate you. <laughs> oh, because that's just you. Seriously. Alright, next up, here we go. Except will release a live set, which is called Symphonic Terror Live at Vakken 2017 on November 23rd via Nuclear Blast. Fans can expect a unique Except show shot on August 3rd, 2017 at the legendary Vakken Open Air Festival, where the band played the biggest and most extraordinary show of his career in front of 80,000 on top of thousands more fans watching via a live stream. Symphonic Terror, live at Valken 2017, will be available as, check this out. This is a lot of shit. Blu-ray plus two CD digipack. DVD plus two CD digipack. Two CD digipack. Three LP box black, including booklet and poster. Three, D, three LP box gold, including booklet, poster, which is just a Nuclear Blast mail order exclusive. Blu-ray, DVD, two CD earbook. Blu-ray, DVD, two CD earbook, plus photo card signed, which is also a Nuclear Blast mail order exclusive. I finally realized what an earbook is. Isn't you know those like the flip ones? Well, well that's you, the G-Pack, isn't it? Well, you know the, the 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 big books that I get for like Arion yeah. albums. Those are apparently earbooks. I had no idea. Why I, I is could it be wrong. Earbook? I don't get it. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that when so, when I saw it, it was one of those things where like I'm looking and it says earbook and it shows what I have and I'm like oh and I have an the, earbook the digipack would be like the threefold CD pack probably right yeah oh yeah yeah Dig- digipacks are usually just the they're they're usually the ones that are in cardboard and they fold out yeah. so you know basically everything's going cardboard anyway as far as yeah. uh, CD releases so, the most part. so you can't see, even say digipack special at this point so all right Tech, uh, Dallas, Texas metalcore band Memphis May Fire will release its new album Broken on November 16th via Rela- uh, Rise Records. Rise Records. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Pestilence have parted ways with bassist um, Tillin Hudrap due to scheduling differences and have replaced him with Edward uh, Negria. Mm-hmm. That should have been in general news. Oh, my bad. Get your shit right. <laughs> Hey, you know what? It's your first time doing the script. It's cool. Uh, I was I was doing a lot of shit. So. I'll, I'll try to con- contribute as much as I can. It's just that I don't have time to sit down and. What what I'm what I'm supposed to be doing is is each day sitting down and at the end of the day. Just That's what I there. tried to do. The thing is, my schedule now is like I wake up, I go to work, I come home for like three hours, and I go back to work. Yeah. Go home, go to sleep. Yeah, that's I, my schedule I, I, every day. I, I meant to do that, and then I was like, "Oh shit, today's the day." <laughs> you know, because it's funny because I sat down on Friday night, is my one night off. I'm like, "All right, maybe I'll maybe I'll see what Dan's up to, see if he's like maybe it's I'll... blank." <laughs> and it, it was perfectly blank. I'm like, you know what? Fuck that. <laughs> I'm gonna let him do it. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not touching yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, co- and, and again, covering a full month worth of stuff because we were we were on a on a mini. Potential hiatus, but we are we are not. We're trying to be back. The, the the thing that's holding us up right now is my work schedule. Yeah, I work for UPS. <clears throat> we are about to head into like our Armageddon, which yeah. is like the the month of November and December where oh everybody decides to order shit. You are gonna be like a zombie on when it comes to Cyber Monday. Oh, dude. Yeah, you. You know, you know what's really funny? I mention I, I mention this all the time. Is that. Uh, well, it was a couple months ago. Amazon had their Prime Day, yeah. And that night and the night after that, we were fucked. 
stacked. Yeah. We had so much. I was shit. I was gonna say, like like what you should do on Black Friday is go out and buy another coffee maker. So you can be... <laughs> I have a coffee maker, a French press, and espresso maker. What more do I need? <laughs> uh, you might need another coffee maker. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a case of monster energy drinks somewhere in my house. <laughs> They try to hide him from me because I keep on, like, anyway, can I? Let's... Yes, carry on. Yeah. Okay. Artillery will release their ninth studio album, The Face of Fear, on November 16th via Metal Blade. That is cool. D. Snyder will release Sick Motherfuckers live in the USA on October 5th. That's actually already happened now. Yeah, I wrote, via ear music. I wrote on there already. Oh, passed. I see that. Now, and I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna stop real quick because this is the one where Blabbermouth was all. Chuck that cock! <laughs> Holy shit, I have never seen so much like just like pandering to the man in an in an article. It's Holy shit. I, I, I'm a I'm a firm believer in in when you're doing journalism, just put the facts out there. It's not your opinion. This is not an editorial. That's what metal sucks and metal injection are for. Yeah. It it was it was like basically saying like he was like it's like this the 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 hard rock god D <laughs> Snyder releases this album and like the, the the next thing like doesn't even describe the album like the actual information about the album it just says it's a it's it doesn't let off from start to finish and I was like I don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> let me make that decision I, what the word I'll is. tell you if it lets up <laughs> if it lets up you're fucked <laughs> you know and I was just like never oh, stop never stopping. <laughs> <laughs> you don't outgrow a uh, Dave Grohl, Dave Grohl. <laughs> Only Dave Grohl can out Dave Grohl, Dave Grohl. <laughs> you can't out D Snyder, D Snyder. <laughs> Speaking of out Dave Grohl and Dave Grohl, they always they do these things at their shows where they bring up somebody and they like do a cover. Sometimes like it's Dave Grohl's little girl, his daughter. She gets Man. on the drums and does the drum beat. They, they did the Enter Sandman thing. They did Enter Sandman with a ten year old guitarist this weekend. Yeah, and it was actually really fucking good. Yeah. But, but this article was like, like you remember that scene from the Big Lebowski where where um, where Jesus is is basically shining balls. It was it was a lot of that. <laughs> yes, but he's shining his own balls. So this is Blairmouth shining D. Snyder's ball. Yeah, yeah. Imagine it the other way around, where, where somebody is is doing it for him. Like that's how it was. It was so it was so much dick sucking. It was bad. <laughs> They were cupping the ball. <laughs> Struck a shaft. Swallow the gravy. Get over here, buddy. Let's do this. Oh, Trump. And Thunder. they were sure. They were sure to swallow. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> That's what Blabbermouth is good for sometimes. Oh, though. for oh. fuck's sake. Okay. All right. Whew. Chevelle will release an album of rarities called 12 Bloody Spies on October 26th. Cool. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Ain't sucking no Actually, dick. There, 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 you don't look like D. Snyder to me. <laughs> there, there's, there's been more, more articles about it and, like, you know, like, this videos released and everything, but I kept that one simple just because I don't really care as much about Chevelle. Right, I know what folks do. Let's, just, let's move on to Meshuggah have announced a very special vinyl reissue collection celebrating the band's <laughs> legacy. The collection offers a limited one-time only pressing that includes reimagined cover art, redesigned gatefold jackets, and audio mastered for vinyl. The first five albums will be released via Nuclear Blast on November 30th. The first five reissues being released on November 30th are as follows. The Meshuggah EP from 1989. Clear with Black Splatter, limited to 500. Contradictions Collapse, 1991. Bone Gray Swirl, limited to 500 copies. Man, so... None EP, 1994. Bronze with Black Splatter, limited to 500. Destroy, Erase, Improve, 1995. Gold Brown Swirl, limited to 500. And Catosphere, Chaosphere, 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 1998. Swamp Green with Mint Green Splatter. Sounds like ice cream to me. Yeah. Limited to 500 copies. That's, that sounds like a Pete thing. I don't know if he's a fan of my sugar or not. It still just sounds like vinyl. Yeah, it, 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 it does sound like fun. You missed one, by the way. Did I? Yeah. Where? Chrome Division. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Chrome Division, which is the Norwegian band featuring Dimu Borgir frontman Sagrath on guitar, will release its fifth 
and final album, One Last Ride, on November 30th, via Nuclear Blast. Which is kind of a shame, because I, I've, I've only heard one song by them, and it was really fucking good. So I'm sure the rest of their material is quite interesting. So Something to follow up on. Yeah. Oh. Sabaton's 2012 album, Carlosis Rex. Carolus. Huh? Carolus. Carolus? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Car- Carolus Rex. Yeah, I totally read that as Carlos. <laughs> Carlos Rex. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carolus Rex. Yeah. Sabaton. Sabaton. Um, have been, has been certified quadruple platinum in the band's home country of Sweden. To celebrate the band's, uh, the album's success and to commemorate the Swedish king who inspired it, Sabaton will release a special 300th anniversary edition of Carolus Rex. 300th anniversary edition. Yeah. Okay. That's, a, that's not a typo. November 30th, which is the... Okay, which is the day Carolus Rex was killed in Norway, featuring the album in English and Swedish, as well as a live disc of those who purchase for those who purchase the earbook edition. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that, that that seems pretty cool. I'm sure. I'm sure that is a thing that it, that. Um, what's his name? Patricio? Pat. Pat is all sorts of happy about. Patricio. All right, Cardinal Ford is back. And has signed a deal with Vicky Solom Productions. We'll stick with that. The group's new album, Gun to Mouth Salvation, will be released on January 25th of 2019. It was Carnal Forge's first LP since 2007's Testify for My Victims. Yeah. Metal Church will release their 12th full-length studio album, Damned If You Do, on December 7th via Rat Pack Records. The effort will also be available in Europe via Nuclear Blast and Japan via King Records. The latest release is the follow-up to 2016's Eleven, which saw the return of legendary frontman Mike Howe. <gasps> Actually, I knew about that before I was doing the news thing because I get emails from, from Rat Pack Records. And they were like, yeah, the new Metal Church album. I was like, there's a new Metal Church album? What? <laughs> How come you didn't tell me, motherfucker? <laughs> oh, wait, you just did. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but we just did. <laughs> but we totally just did. So I'm I'm super stoked for that. I actually listened to the uh, the single earlier today um, as I was doing the news thing. And I am, I am, my body is ready. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. There's another long one here. So we just... Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you can shorten this one if you want. Okay. Well, on November 16th, um, you, you, me, Anthem, old... Uh, just a lot of titles for this uh, label. Anyway, their group continues its extensive Rush 40th anniversary album series with a new expanded edition of the band's groundbreaking 1978 release, Hemispheres, in four distinct configurations. The Super Deluxe Edition of Hemisphere's 40th Anniversary will also include several exclusive items, including a 40-page hardcover book with unreleased photos and new artwork by original album designer Hugh Sim, an extensive 11,000-plus word essay by Rob Bowman, The Words and the Pictures, a replica of the band's rare 1979 UK tour program, a 24-by-24-inch wall poster of the newly created Sim art, a Pink Pop Festival replica ticket, a Pink Pop Festival replica cloth VIP sticky pass, and a replica 1978 Rush Hemispheres Iron On patch. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm gonna yeah. stop there because it just yeah. keeps on going. It, it it goes on for a while because because of the fact that there is so much within the package. Like there, there's that, just that's ridiculous. They, they they put a lot of effort into these these 40th anniversary things. Oof. So um, I think that's kind of, actually I think that's kind of awesome. Yeah, I have the album ready, so I'm kind of angry. <laughs> I mean, that's just what happens. But I'm also not. What, a, what um, I'm looking forward to is when, when, I mean, I have a lot of Rush records. I do. Yeah. yeah. And like, they're also really like the the lesser known ones are really cheap on Amazon. So if like I have like five bucks and I like want to buy a record, I buy a Rush record. Yeah. But um, I wanted to see the day where they release the complete Rush series. <laughs> Like, uh, like they did with the Ju- uh, the Jews Priest box set before yeah. they re- started recording new albums again. Yeah, you know the same thing they did with the complete studio recordings of Led Zeppelin, The Doors. That's what I want. I want a complete studio recordings of Rush. One box, one time, 
24 records, whatever the fuck it is, call it a day. Problem with that, I mean, I would, I, I, I would, I have most of their records anyway, um, so uh, most of them on CD. Um, but I don't see them doing that because of the fact that their fan base is so rabid that stuff like this will sell. Oh, that's for sure. Like. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's for sure. yeah, I mean, all the all you have to sit there is the drum solo of life. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a use for that clip. I know. Um, yes. But all, all you gotta do, like, the, the the number of people who are probably willing to buy this thing are astronomical. Probably. True. It's true. Yeah. The the Rush is another one of those bands that have have been under the radar, but have persisted and pretty hard. You know what's really funny about about Rush <clears throat> mm-hmm. and. I I found this watching their documentary because I think it was Matt Stone from South Park who said this is that the people who were closet fans of Rush, the people who love Rush as kids, are now in places of power. Mm-hmm. You know, where they make these kinds of decisions where like what's gonna be released and what's cool and all this good stuff. And uh these are also the people that could afford these things, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> these are the people with like, you know, six figure jobs of like, yeah. Rush 40th anniversary, 200 bucks, not a problem. Yeah. I got that. Like, yeah, especially, you know, Matt Stone and that South Park money. Well, yeah, just making yeah, it rain, coffee yeah. bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here you go, guys. <laughs> uh, no, $200 uh, for the Rush 40th anniversary. Uh, uh, Kyle's money. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Your tears are so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I took all the money that, that that I wanted from you, and I turned them all into pennies. So now I can swim in them. Ah, cows, money. <laughs> Ted Nugent will release his new studio album. The music made me do it on November 9th Like I said, November. Ted Nugent. Yep. Um, who is who's still pretty active as far as uh, touring and making music? I think his last album was 2014. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's still going. Wow. When he, you know, when he's not, uh, you know, being a douche. Yeah. <laughs> All right. King's X has inked a deal with uh, Australian independent record label Golden Robot Records for release of the band's next studio album. The follow-up to 2008's 15 is tentatively due in 2019 via Golden Robots partners in the U.S., Europe, and Japan. Speaking of bands that are taking a long time to release albums. Yeah, really. All right, Billy Bio, the solo project of Biohazard and Powerflow guitarist uh, Billy Graziadel. Graziadel. Yeah, what he said. Will release his debut album Feed the Fire on November 30th via AFM Records. It's kind of funny that it, it has to be like like a solo project because isn't he like the only like he, original he, member of Biohazard left? Yeah, exactly. Like Evan Seinfeld left a long time ago, and he's he's and and Billy's le- uh, led the band since then. Well, I think maybe is it a different style of music? Is it probably. a hardcore album? It, you know? It's probably like I, I, I think mean, that's what most of these most of these solo projects tend to be. Is it, <laughs> it they're straying from what they're known for and that's why it has to be a different name and everything I want a band to completely change styles still under the same name and Devin Townsend is not included in that so don't or start. Opeth or Opeth well, <laughs> Op- Opeth is a good example Opeth and, da- and Damnation that's 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 a good example right there. Just, just completely, just pump the brakes. Well, no, here, here's the thing about Opeth and Damnation. The fact of the matter is that if you listen to the discography before that and you did not see that album coming, it's your own fucking fault. It really is. It but, really is. <laughs> but I want a, I want a band to release an album that is completely just out of the blue, like, like, for example. Um, Steven Tyler's country album. Ugh. If they release that under Aerosmith's title, like just yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Like I want to see completely it, go off the rails and just yeah. like completely 180 everybody. Yeah, uh, I, w- I would love to see that because I would cause because because I can imagine this look on people's faces like like the look I had the first time I heard Back Country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you were you were not having it that day. 
<laughs> that was a bad day. That was that was that was a that was a bad day. There, 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 there were bats everywhere. Like what the fuck? <laughs> All right. Last in line has completed work on his sophomore album for an early 2019 release via Frontiers Music. That is always cool. Yep. Overkill have completed work on the follow-up to 2017's The Grinding Wheel album. No title has been given as of yet. Yeah, they... they... That will just be another thrash-in-your-face masterpiece. <sighs> yes, of course, because because they just can't... They will never die. They're going to be doing this... Bobby Blitz will be doing that until he's, you know, he's, he's and like, in. And we've talked about this. Every album sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the further along their production quality goes... With that particular sound of mu- pr- brand of music, the thicker the sound. I mean, God, damn, thrash albums sound amazing. And 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 you know what? It's it's funny because I I can't listen to the I can't hear the phrase "damn right" without thinking of him anymore. Because <laughs> on the last album, I think it was song "Red, White, and Blue." There's a breakdown sort of, and it's just him going "damn right, <laughs> damn right." <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's stuck in my head, like like the like the, that cadence and this just that 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 attitude, a damn right, <laughs> and his voice, and, and and in his obviously in his voice, because I'm not gonna try to mimic that. <laughs> I'm not gonna gargle acid. I'm gonna live to tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Attitude, Altitudes and Attitude, which is the project featuring Anthrax bassist Frankie Bello and Megadeth bassist Dave Ellison, will release its debut album, Get It Out, on January 18, 2019, via Megaforce. Now, they released an EP years ago. I was going to say, because this is, this is definitely not their first release. No, they, they released an EP a few years ago, and now this is a full-length album between oh, the two of them. All right. So. Here we go. Last bit of recording news here, finally. We reached the end here. <laughs> Adrenaline Mob guitarist Mike Orlando will release an instrumental DVD, Mike Orlando's Sonic Stomp, on, sept- on December 3rd. The Sonic Stomp was recorded live at the Thiago Bianchi's. Bianchi's. <laughs> Fuasso. Oh. It's Brazil. It's recorded in fucking Brazil, okay? <laughs> and was filmed by Junior Corelli and Rudge Campos of Foggy Films. It contains footage of Orlando playing 12 killer tracks from his Sonic Stomp releases. The DVD includes full band performances as well as solo renditions. If you haven't heard any of the Sonic Stomp releases, um, yeah, they will blow you away. They are virtuoso playing to the extreme, and yeah, Mike Orlando is a fucking amazing guitar player. Um, As much as his solos may be good in in, uh, Adrenaline Mob, the band does does not give him enough freedom, you know, I always felt that Adrenaline Mob was like that that particular group of guys like just kind of stepping back and having fun instead of yeah, trying ex- to Yeah, exactly. Like when Mike, when Mike Portnoy was in it, the drum beats were very just hard rock, rock and roll. They weren't Dream Theater or any of his other side project like level of yeah, technicality. Were, Same thing with Mike Orlando's playing. They, they like were, he said, solos are great, but the riffs were just like, you know, they were hard rock riffs. They were, they were doing it for fun. Yeah. So, so even yeah. Even... Um, Russell Allen singing. It was more of a hard rock singer than him being yeah. in Symphony X. But if you want to see the absolute raw talent of of uh, Mike Orlando, the Sonics, I'm sure this DVD will show it off like in spades. So, all right, here we go. We are finally done with recording news, and we are heading into concert news. Yeah, I, we didn't do a crowdfunding tracker for this for this week. So we're going to go straight into touring news. We have no festival news, which was strange, although you could consider it like the, one of the one-offs of festival. Well, there's, there's other things that like there's being there's new announcements like almost every day about new cruises. Now, Megadeth has a cruise that's going yeah. to happen. There's all those that come there were, up. There were two things that Megadeth was doing that I was going to include that I, I was just like, I don't feel like reading this. Well, so. well there's the, the Mega Cruise, I think it's called, and then mm. there's Kegadeth. Yes. Which is a beer festival with a Megadeth show, pretty much. Yes, pretty much. All right, but anyway, let's go into touring. Which news. is interesting because I'm, I thought David was Dave was supposed to be sober again. That doesn't necessarily mean anything because Metallica just released a whiskey that and James true. Hetfield is sober. I just found it found it interesting that he, they would have a... a, a they crowd. know their audience. That is true. Just because they don't drink doesn't mean their audience doesn't. That is true. They know their audience. All right, Crocus will embark on a, quote, farewell tour next year. 
The Swiss hard rock veterans announced their plan to pull the plug on their 40 decade or their four decades, so 40 years. Decades, like, damn. Yeah, it sounds more like a Jewish <laughs> proverb than anything else. There, um, four decade plus career and a Facebook post writing Crocus shows have always been special and should stay that way. That's why we decided to stop when it's still really good. That's how the fans should remember us. I'm just, I'm just imagining like the, like you know, in the era of the Black Plague, and there's Crocus in the background just rocking out. <laughs> Tell you the truth, Crocus sounds like something from the Black Plague to begin with. It sounds like the Black Plague. <laughs> I like Crocus, so so do I. They're good. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just now I'm further imagining it. Like, remember that Starbucks commercial that had um, Survivor in it? And was singing about the guy. Who yes, was, the guy yeah. who had the soundtrack. That's what I'm life. imagining. This is like, like, like the, the, the drummer is on like a wheeled car, and they're just <laughs> going high in the background. <laughs> oh. Roy, 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 Roy. <laughs> now I'm remembering that commercial. That was brilliant. Oh, I love that commercial. It was fucking amazing. All right, Silver Tomb, a new band featuring former Typo Negative and Agnostic Front. Oh, former members of Typo Negative and Agnostic Front will support Life of Agony on the Rise of the Underground Tour. The track will kick off on September twenty, uh, September 12th in uh, Hampton, New Hampshire. Wow, that's just, wow. At Wally's and end on September 29th in New York City at the Barry Ballroom. So this has already passed. There yeah, and this, done. That, that is old, yeah. There and done. Yeah. All right. The surviving members of We Came as Romans have announced that they will honor their fallen singer Kyle Pavone by going ahead with their previously announced U.S. tour as the support act for Bullet for My Valentine. Pavone died of an accidental drug overdose in late August. According to TMZ, his girlfriend told cops he had gone into the bathroom at his home for a long time, and when she went to check on him, she found him unconscious, feet away from a used syringe. The police report said the syringe was found on the counter of the bathroom sink. Police say the girlfriend also revealed Kyle had struggled in the past with heroin use. A toxicology report is still pending. Now, with this one, I know that there's been more since then. Um, I know that they have. They there was an article about the first show back since uh, since they lost their singer, um, and pretty much how they made it into a uh, memorial for him. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if the tour is still going on or not, but you know, I'm I'm wondering. I, I didn't really read much into what they were doing instead, if they were getting a different singer, if they were going to have a singer for Bullet from a Valentine come out. Um, but I suppose, for the most part, good on good on them for continuing the tour, because um, I'm sure everything else would have been as much of a hassle as having to right. bury your friends. So, um, yeah. Oh, uh, this one's fun. Next one's fun. Kiss confirmed that it will embark on its. <laughs> <sighs> I can't even say the word when it regards. You want me to Kiss. read it? Cause I'll read it. I, I can't say the word. I'll I'll do it. Go ahead. Kiss has confirmed that it will embark on its farewell tour. Farewell, Bullshit. Farewell. No. In quotations, I want to mention. I, I'll, I'll actually I'll re- finish reading this first. It's called, the tour is called One Last Kiss, End of the Road World Tour, in 2019. Said Kiss frontman Paul Stanley, "This is going to be our last tour. It will be our most explosive, biggest show we've ever done. People who love us, come see us. If you've never seen us, this is the time. This will be the show." I'm having fun. I want to say that my second concert of all time was Kiss's farewell tour back in 2000. We're talking almost 19 years ago. Almost 19 years ago. They've been saying goodbye for a long time. Yeah, they have. Now, I've read a little little tidbits since then um, that have said that Gene Simmons said that you know the original farewell tour was them wanting to go out with the tail between the legs, but the fans called them back. Kind of yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, more like you know the Benjamins calling them back. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't yeah. believe I don't believe anything that man says. The fan of them hundreds. Um. <laughs> yeah, for, for real. <laughs> but my bank account called me back. <laughs> but also, <laughs> but also, I uh, there's a, there was a headline that said that if you want from Paul Stanley that said if you want to hear how I sound, 
If you want to hear me sound like I did on the Alive album, go listen to the Alive album. It's basically questioning whether or not he can still do, you know, do what the vocal. he does. Yeah. Um, which, I don't know. I haven't seen any Kiss Live footage in years. Yeah. So who knows what he sounds like now. Um, but I do feel that as far as a touring band, this I is... still see Kiss being that first rock band that lives on forever, like the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. There will be no original members of the band, but the band will continue. It's not. It's no longer a band. It's a franchise. It's a brand. Like I don't like. They're like the Harlem fucking Globetrotters, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> All they gotta do is keep fresh faces in that in that paint, and people will go see it. It's almost like seeing the goddamn hologram of fucking Dio. Are we, are we taking bets? Are, are we gonna, are we going to take bets? No, I'm, I don't. I don't bet on things unless they're a sure thing. But the fact of the matter is, this is I, I've always envisioned Kiss being that band. I've well, always envisioned well, it. Well, you, your your dreams are shattered. I apologize. They are they are embarking on their farewell tour. No, the thing is, after this though, uh, after they after Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley say farewell to the road, what's to say that Kiss the brand doesn't hit the road again as a traveling show as a Cirque du Soleil as a Trans-Siberian Orchestra Kiss coming to town this season for your summer fucking pleasure you know we're gonna <laughs> blow up a small part of the world to celebrate our country's independence you know <laughs> I mean come on you don't see this happening celebrating freedom by blowing up the world <laughs> you don't see this happening I uh, it's, I, I can see it as a possibility, but I don't see it as... I definitely don't see it as... It leans more towards the less likely to uh, I don't. I, I, see, I see them as just being like a brand now. They're not a band, they're a brand. We'll have to see how that goes. And I can see them being that, the first band to do that. Okay. You know, And I can just see other bands continuing on doing that. You know, and following in that footstep. But do you really want Kiss to be the band? No, that... I don't want them to be, but I can see it being the band. But I mean, do you? Okay. I can just see it. I can just see them, the, the name Kiss carrying on forever with different members every couple of years. Okay. I'll let you, I'll let you live with that one. I will, I will live with that one. Carry on. Metallica. Will embark on a European tour in May with Ghost. That's so fucking awesome. As special guests on all four Europe, European legs of the tour. Metallica's 2019 Worldwide Stadium Tour begins on May 1st in Lisbon, Portugal, and will play 25 stadiums from May through August. That's awesome. And they're not playing here. So! And you fail! Well, Metallica actually just played Austin City Limits last weekend. I was going to say they're not doing the Metallica Ghost Tour no, for, that, for the U.S. No, no. Which yeah. I, I would go. I would go see. Well, he's not sexy magician anymore. He's he's creepy Al Pacino now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. So I mean, I would go now, see. Now that just the vision of a creepy Al Pacino singing "Dance Macabre" is just so vivid in my head. Hoo <laughs> 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 But it's not being sung at you; it's being yelled at you. Hoo <laughs> Hoo I can't stop saying hoo <laughs> The opening scene to that critic episode. <laughs> You're going to miss my, my tangoing, my blind driving, my hoo You said that already. I say it a lot. <laughs> hoo <Hoo-ah. sighs> Okay. On October 5th, which already happened, Metalville Records will reissue a physical, digitally remastered CD edition of American Progressive Metal Band Crimson Glory's self-titled album, licensed from the Roadrunner, Roadrunner Records archive. That is cool because Crimson Glory is awesome. In all of their glory of Crimson. Now, this one is supposed to be touring. I put it in the wrong spot. This, oh. Uh, did, oh we, yeah. did we sudden? Yeah, I, yep. I, 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 yeah I, that's a mix-up. That's cool. I do it all the time. Uh, yeah. I, I, spl- I started splitting up. Yep. All right. But anyway, Skindred has been forced to cancel its previously announced U.S. tour in support of its new album, Big Tings. Big Tings. 
Uh, they said in a statement, due to unforeseen circumstances beyond our control, we have unfortunately had to cancel our run of U upcoming U.S. tour dates, which were due to start in Florida later this week. We sincerely apologize to you who have bought tickets for any inconvenience caused and hope to reschedule some of these shows back in uh, shows back in for 2019. The trek was scheduled to kick off on September 26th in Jacksonville, Florida, and run through October 12th in Tempe, Arizona. Actually, the next few are more touring stuff. I... I... Yeah. All right. Dream Theater keyboardist Jordan Rudis will embark on a three continent solo piano tour from Bach to Rock, featuring the music of Dream Theater reimagined for the piano. The trek will begin on November 12th with performances in Japan, Tabai, 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 um, and Singapore, followed by seven shows in Australia and New Zealand and five shows in Argentina, Chile, and Brazil. That sounds awesome. That also sounds like like the basis of a tribute album, but that sounds awesome. Yeah. So, next up here, Ozzy Osbourne has now canceled the remaining four shows on his North American No More Tours two, following additional uh, evaluation from his doctors. Ozzy Osbourne will likely require another surgery in the coming days to treat multiple infections in his right hand. I believe he did actually have that surgery just this past weekend. Mm -hmm. The four canceled shows were originally scheduled as follows. Shoreline Amphitheater in Mount View, California on October 6th. Mattress Firm Amphitheater in Chula Vista on October 9th. The Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles, California on October 11th. And the MGM Graham Garden Arena in Las Vegas on October 13th. The three California shows had previously been rescheduled following his initial prognosis from doctors. All four shows will be rescheduled for 2019, prolonging the No More Tours 2 and keeping the man on the road. Well, there was an article also that said that it's like it's called No More Tours. It's not called No More No More Tours ever. Basically what he's doing according to the article is that he is no longer doing frequent tours. No. So, if he decides in 5 years to do a tour, he will do a tour. <sighs> which is not going to happen. Unfortunately, the man is not going to make it that long no. as far as mobility goes. Well, forget mobility. I mean, I just wouldn't want to pay to hear his voice mm. anymore. Um, I don't want to also point out that um, I'm looking at the names of these these uh, amphitheaters and, and so the one that stands out is the Mattress, Mattress Firm, Firm Amphitheater. Amphitheater. I love that one. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> it's it's like that that intro bit from uh from basketball where it's like the Tampax tampon yep. Yep. theater or yep. something. You bet. You bet. <laughs> it, it's so it's so disappointing sometimes when you when you you're watching a sporting event or you go to a concert and he's like the MetLife Stadium. It's like that was the giant stadium. I think I think for um for for a WWE event uh for I think for WrestleMania 30 they were doing, they were doing it at the same venue that WrestleMania three was at, the Silverdome. Yeah, but it's not called the Silverdome anymore. Apparently, oh, it's called a different name. But they were told exclusively, do not refer to it as that name. Refer to it as the Silverdome. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite bit that I've ever seen. I forget where he, where the WrestleMania was, but I think Hulk Hogan was hosting. It was that one. Oh, and he kept on saying the wrong stadium yeah. name. He kept saying like Superdome or something yeah. like that. It was yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was at the Superdome, but he was kept on calling it the Silverdome or something like that. So, something something like, that. like that. Yeah. And the audience is like getting on his ass because I think he was in Detroit, or he was in the, the he was in the like the it was just wrong. It was yeah, just wrong yeah, all around. Yeah, he 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 done fucked it up. Yeah, and well, it was just hilarious because he's he went on for like five minutes. Almost almost as bad as when and Jeremy Jeremy Piven called it. Called SummerSlam Summerfest. Oh, <laughs> oh, botches. All right. We're going into one offs now. All right. According to the Pulse of Radio, Red Hot Chili Peppers drummer Chad Smith will lead a one off supergroup called Chad Smith's Super Mega Fantastic Jam Rock All Stars. If you could come up with a better name than that, I challenge you. Yeah, for real. Uh, this is going to be at a charity event on October 6th at the Greek mm -hmm. Theater in Los Angeles, which has passed. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing here is that the band will feature Coldplay singer Chris Martin. That's not necessarily cool, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Pearl um... Jam guitarist Mike McCready, Chili Peppers guitarist Josh Klinghoffer, and um, Guns N' Roses bassist Duff McKagan. 
You know, if it's just if it's a super group involving charity, Duff McKagan will probably be playing bass for you. It's just this the way things tend to work out. <laughs> the event is dubbed Will Ferrell's Best Night of Your Life and will be hosted by Will Ferrell, which is fantastic because those guys do. Oh, they mm. mentioned that. Yeah. The actor and Smith have turned their uncanny resemblance to um, each other, uh, uncanny resemblance to each other, into a running joke that has also served as the springboard for a number of charity events. Along with Smith's all-star band, comedians confirmed to take part in the festivities include Jerry Seinfeld, Jimmy Kimmel, Conan O'Brien, Samantha B, Michelle Wolf, and Kumali Nanjiani. Nanjiani, okay. I thought that was very uh, a very funny setup. Yeah, just. You've seen the clip of them on uh, the Conan uh, O'Brien show doing yeah. the drum up. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah, so th- this is basically just just you know let's let's capitalize on this and let's let's do some good with it. Yeah. So. All right. Last but not least, here for one office, Disturbed has partnered with the USO to give special performances for the airmen at Creech and Nellis Air Force bases in India, Indian Springs and Las mm-hmm. Vegas, respectively, on October twenty third and twenty fourth. In addition to the performances, the band will take part in USO morale engagements to visit airmen where they work and learn more about the important missions at each base. And that's always cool. Always so. cool. Five Finger Death Punch is known for that, too. Yes. They're, they're yes. big proponents of the USO. Yes. So let's move on to heavy metal in the charts. And you actually noted uh, a few, a slim few of points uh, about the top 200 because yes. the top 200 has become a shit it, show. Yeah, it's a shit show. It's a shit show. But there's a couple things here. Um, Beartooth, they have a new release out called Disease. And it debuts at number 40. Which means it's probably going to be like, like number one. Number one on the hard rock. On yeah. hard rock. Here's one that's for you, Dan. Queen's Greatest Hits is up to number 54. From out of nowhere. From the top. Now, the thing about this is is that this probably has been springboarded by the multiple trailers for the Bohemian Rhapsody Rhapsody. movie. Which looks absolutely fantastic. And actually, uh, part of the – another article – I passed over was saying that this is that movie is looking to be potentially the second best um, opening weekend for a biopic behind like what? Uh, Wolf of Line? I th- well, the picture they show was was um, of uh, Mick Jagger. So, well, then the other cool thing about it is that we got the Freddie Mercury biopic. And then there's also a new another biopic called Rocket Man, Man coming for out. For Elton John, which Elton also John. looks good. And the thing I like more about the Elton John one is that um, – what's his name? Taron Egerton. Taron Egerton is actually doing the singing. Yeah. While the guy who's playing uh, Freddie Mercury is not singing. He's not singing? I thought, he, I, thought as, he, I thought he was. As far as I can tell, all the music that they play – on the trailer and everything that they have him lip syncing to mm-hmm. in the trailer is still Freddie Mercury. And there, the soundtrack is Queen songs, not Queen songs done by him. Mm. From what I, I, I from I'm, what I understand. But I, I was I was fairly certain that there was Well the thing is when you listen to the, the trailer, the music in the trailer for Rocket Man, you can yeah. tell it's him singing it because yeah. it's it's not the same tone as Elton John, but it's just as good. Yeah. And but you can tell it's his voice, not Elton's voice. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, it's completely different. Either way, I'm seeing both. Yeah, so. the, the, I'm just super stoked that they that for Rocket Man they got Tyron to do it, especially because he was the gorilla in Sing. Yeah, and he sang uh, a really good rendition of "I'm Still Standing." Yeah. So that casting decision was a no brainer. So yeah. plus he kind of looks like him. Yeah, we in see. makeup and stuff like that, it yeah. kind of looks like him. Yeah. All right, next up though, we got the Black Album continuing their five. 100th non-consecutive week on the so Billboard chart. 501, click. <laughs> number 140 up from 143. Black Album's got to be up there in numbers as well at 155 from 164. Yeah, I wonder what that's at. Yeah, that's, that's a curious question. And the Five Finger Death Punch and Justice for None uh, record is at 194 down from 175. Yeah. All right. And do we want to close things out with our... Hard rock albums. Let's talk about hard rock albums. All right. Number 25 is a new album by a band called Terror. Their album is called Total Retaliation. Terror is actually a good band. So. Yeah, I think I've, heard, I've listened to them before. I'm yeah, pretty they, sure. They are a good band. So. Next up is number 24, Three Days Grace, uh, 1X. Nah. Number 23 is a new record from Revocation. 
Uh, the outer ones. I didn't know they had a new one out. Neither did I, so that means I gotta go to Amazon real soon. All right, number twenty-two is Queen's Greatest Hits, number one, two, and three, the Platinum Collection. Whoa, that's a lot. Wait, 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 wait. Number twenty-one is Disturbed, Immortalized, making a comeback. Which I listened to recently. Um, I listened to some some just some random Disturbed recently, and um, they are better than I remember. They always had really good hooks and groove and stuff like that. Yeah, like just, just the the debut album has not aged well at all. Mm. No, no n- most of the stuff from that era hasn't aged well at all. Yeah, you know, because they, they were very much a product of the time. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it just it just definitely has not aged very well. I think the only thing that really kind of aged well from that time might be the Slipknot record. Yeah. Because it was a product of the time, but it was still something outside of the box. Yes. Um, it's funny because there, there was a bit about um, someone asking David Draymond why he took out the chin. Because uh, he didn't want to look like a 45-year-old yeah, Hot yeah. Topic kid. Yeah, and I was like, dude, you already did. <laughs> sorry, sorry, bro. Like, dude, you haven't really aged in the last 15 years. Uh, also, and you looked exactly the same. Also, I'm sure your kids are probably grabbing at it all the time. All right. <laughs> all right, number 20, Led Zeppelin Four. Number 19 is Aerosmith's Greatest Hits. 18 is Def Leppard's Greatest Hits. 17 is All the Right Reasons by Nickelback. Number 16 is Meteora by Linkin Park. Number 15 is the new album from Hail the Sun called Mental Knife. I have no idea what that is. No, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Number 14 is The Foo Fighters' Greatest Hits. 13 is Three Doors Down, Greatest Hits. Number 12, Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and The Conspirators. Living the Dream. Where'd that come from? That's a, that's a new release from mm. a couple weeks ago. Mm. Number 11 is Greta Van Fleet from The Fires. This is also, remember, this is an EP. It's not even their full-length debut album yet. Yeah. Uh, number 10 is Linkin Park, Hyper Theory. Number 9, Bon Jovi, Greatest Hits. Number 8, And Justice for None, Five Finger Death Punch. Number 7, Mothership, Led Zeppelin. Number six, ACDC, Black, uh, Back in Black. Number five, Five Finger Death Punch, A Decade of Destruction. Number four, Greatest Hits, Guns N' Roses. Number three, Black Album, Spinal Tap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, made, what gave you the idea to make an all-black album Metallica, Metallica Representatives? representatives. <laughs> Still one of my favorite scenes from that, from that DVD. Number two is Queen's Greatest Hits. The other, and uh, number one is "Disease" by Beartooth, debuting at number one on the hard rock charts. Which means that it'll drop off, and Queen will go back to number Pretty one. Pretty much, that's what happens every time a new album comes out. Which, which is which is just beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Queen at the top of the world again. Wait until wait wait until that movie comes out. Oh man. Like every greatest hits collection of theirs will be on the on the charts. Oh yeah, and, and it's and almost the, like if somebody and the, died. And the soundtrack. So, yep. So, the hard rock charts are as we expected. Pretty much. But I think what we could take away from today's episode is the fact that there is a lot of shit coming out. And it's yeah, going to be is. awesome. 2019 is going to kick you in the fucking dick. Oh, man. It's just... And I'd rather get kicked in the dick a thousand more times. It's going to kick you in the dick so bad. <laughs> Oh, there's one thing that we forgot to mention here. What's and that? Soil Work has a new album coming out in January 2019, so that's going to kick off the new year for this dude right here. <laughs> yeah, that's going to... And I've listened to the new song because they posted a single. Oh, dude. See, the, the only the only part I'm, I'm worried about is if it ends up being disappointing and then you're like, oh, my God, this year can go die. <laughs> no, I don't think that's going to happen. No. No, because Soil Work never disappoints me. No, they don't. Even well, their most mediocre uh, stuff is good. Yeah, I was going to say, the Living, in- <laughs> the, the, the living Infinite is as close as they get to... Uh, yeah, and that's because it was just it was just too much. Yeah. Like, if they if it was just a single record, The Living Infinite would have been amazing. Yeah. But because it was a little fluffed, it was it wasn't the best. But that's an argument for another time, and I think we're going to close it here. And I think Warrior needs food badly. Yeah, actually, yeah, he, I have. Uh, I brought a lunch bag. I got yeah, food. he has to go to work. I so, gotta go to work. Yeah, he's gotta, he's gotta, he's gotta, you know, consume. I don't. Have-